It's the dog days of August as I make this video, but today we are thinking winter and talking about off-grid heating systems. I spent 29 years off-grid struggling to find the most efficient and cost-effective way to heat my cabin. Hi, I'm Amy, and this was my little cabin in the woods. Today we are going to talk about the pros and cons of wood stoves and propane heating units. First, we'll discuss heating with wood. I love wood heat. It appeals to me emotionally and physically. Warm heat that radiates into the room. The biggest expense is the actual wood stove. This stove was a Vermont casting, which I was lucky enough to get used for 500. Here I am in one of my older videos on seed catalogs. Wood stoves do hold their value well and are a good investment. They are heavier than all get out though, but you can find wood stoves used since there are people that install them and then discover they are a lot of work. Just like on newer cars, many wood stoves have catalytic converters. They help the stove burn more efficiently and release less gases into the environment. Simply put, a catalytic converter reburns the smoke from the fire and reduces the output of pollutants. I noticed a very positive difference when I switched to a wood stove with a catalytic converter. Wood stoves can be a bit cranky and it's like a relationship. You have to figure out what works best to make them happy. They do need to be monitored, unlike a central heating system. Fires go out and need to be started again. Wood gets added. Wood stoves have an impact on your insurance policy as well. Some insurance companies won't insure wood stoves and some have qualifications you must meet. So if you need or want home insurance, it's something to consider. Your chimney and or stovepipe will also need regular cleaning. So the joke always said about heating with wood is that it warms you twice, once while you're cutting and once while you're burning it. That said, a lot of work does go into splitting enough wood for an entire season, and you want to plan ahead because the wood will burn best if it's been seasoned or dried for a year. You can choose to buy cordwood, which is pretty commonly sold in rural areas. Where I'm from in rural Kentucky, you just bought it by the pickup truck load. The other thing I have done is halves. I had a large woods and one of my neighbor's farms was mostly field. So he would come in and cut up trees and fallen branches and we would share the wood. Wood is a renewable resource and we can manage the wood we cut for heat so we are sustainable. I had several ash trees that died due to the emerald ash borer. Burning that wood was actually considered a control for this invasive species. Lots of times trees come down in storms, in yards or on buildings. These need to be cleaned up and what better way than to recycle them for firewood. Leaving some downed or dead trees in your woodlot is just good management. Fallen trees are important places for wildlife to use for shelter and food. And of course, planting more trees is just good stewardship of your land. For every tree I burn, I plant two more. Propane is another common heat source, especially in rural areas. It is a fossil fuel and not renewable. So for me, that plays into the decision making. There are plenty of models of propane heaters and I will link the ones I've used in the description. Most propane freestanding units don't need electricity to run and they typically have temperature settings to help regulate the indoor temperature. The vented models need to have a source of outdoor air, so basically a pipe going through the wall behind it or up through the roof. Always use a carbon monoxide monitor when using either wood or propane heat. The price of propane fluctuates with the oil market and you have no control over that, so that can be frustrating. 
Another issue with propane is it does need to be delivered. If you live off grid, I'm guessing you most likely live in a pretty rural area. This is my road. I lived a mile back on a gravel road and propane deliveries had to be planned for when the road was in decent shape and the big truck could get down it. You can also use smaller propane containers that you can haul back and forth yourself. They don't last long attached to a heater, but I could run a propane refrigerator off one for a month. There are many propane fireplaces with, with, which look pretty enough, although I don't think they heat as well. If, like me, you use propane heaters in a cabin, follow the manufacturer's instructions and have a room with good air circulation. Mine was downright drafty. I will say one problem I had with propane heaters was the ignition switch getting clogged from the dust. This was not a problem with the unit, but because my house was so dusty. Between plywood floors and constant construction, everything was dusty. In the warm weather, I wrapped the unit in a blanket to help keep it cleaner. One nice thing about propane is that it can be used for several other appliances. I had a propane stove and a propane refrigerator. In the beginning, I used both wood and propane heat. After several years, I started cutting back on propane use, and when my son went off to college, I stopped using it altogether. This was a decision that I made based on money, independence, and a need to be a better environmental steward. However, using both can work well, especially if you work outside the home. A propane heater can keep the house at a comfortable level, or above freezing anyway, when you are away. This is good for your appliances and your pets or plants you may have inside. I have a blog article with more details in it, which I will link below. I hope this video has been helpful. Thank you so much for watching to the end. I make videos on organic gardening, my off-grid experiences, and wildlife conservation. Please hit that subscribe button to help me reach others. Have a fabulous day and see you next time.